Good day. Welcome to uh, Independent Appraisers Network Hangout. Uh, and the subject today is graphene. I'm Brian Block, Asset Appraisal Recovery Inc., a member of the Independent Appraisers Network. John, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm John Josco. Our company is Industrial Asset Appraisals and Consulting, and I'm a member of the Independent Appraisers Network. Okay, so today we're going to discuss graphene. John? Why graphene? This discussion is intended for our clients and any other asset-based lenders. Graphene is, is the talk of technology at this point. Since 2010, the Nobel Physics Prize was awarded to the discoverer of graphene. Uh, these guys uh, actually first created graphene using a roll of scotch tape and a piece of graphite, uh, a story which is told many times. There's a great level of interest amongst investors in graphene. So is graphene something we should take note of? Graphene is the first of the practical nanotechnology materials which has left the lab and moved into manufacturing. We have started to see some applications and we will discuss some of these later on in this uh, hangout. So what is graphene? For the non-scientific amongst us, we have a short video to explain the basics. Now the two pure forms of carbon that everyone knows uh, are diamond and graphite. And if you look at diamond, it's made of atoms joined together. Each atom's got four neighbors in this sort of tetrahedral. It's like a scaffolding structure, which accounts for it, uh, why it's very, very strong. Uh, the other form of carbon that everyone knows about is graphite. And in graphite, the atoms are arranged in hexagons, hexagon sheets, one on top of the other. So these are the, the two forms of carbon that everyone knows. But in the last 25 years, a whole range of other structures have been discovered, and they're all really, really interesting. Now, for small numbers of atoms, maybe less than 20, chains seem to be stable. So this is where the atoms are joined one together to form a long chain. They can bend round to form a ring. But these seem to be the stable form for small numbers of atoms. Above 20, um, Cages can form. These are called the fullerenes. This particular one here is the football molecule, C60 Buckminster fullerene. And you can see it's a cage of atoms. So that's different again. There's also nanotubes. These are a nanometer uh, in diameter. That's a thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And they're sort of tubes of carbon atoms. Very, very strong and very, very long. Also, you can take a piece of graphite and you can take the sheets apart. So, and these are called graphene, and these were recently discovered. But the main reason for uh, carbon's versatility is its bonding. In diamond, each atom is joined to four others, and uh, the carbon atom likes to have four neighbours, so each of these is single bond. In the chains, as you can see, uh, each atom only has two neighbours, and the way carbon gets around this is that it forms triple and single and triple and single and triple and single bonds. So in the chains, we have single and triple bonds. In the cages, uh, we have double and single bonds. All the bonds in the pentagons, shown here in purple, are single-like, and all the bonds between the pentagons, in grey here, are double-like. So the, one of the reasons for carbon's versatility is not only a strong bond, but actually it can form single, double, and triple bonds. And this makes it very, very versatile. So let's talk a bit more about graphene. Now graphite is loads of hexagon sheets, one on top of the other. If you remove one of those hexagon sheets, you get a single layer of graphite, which is called graphene. Just to remind you how small these things are, if you put three million graphene sheets, one on top of the other, it would only produce a crystal of graphite one millimetre thick. So what is graphene? This is tr first truly two-dimensional material. It is a material that is genuinely only one atom thick. The physics of 2D materials are very complicated, and the biggest hurdle was how to observe the materials one atom thick. They've now developed a laser technique to view and measure these graphene layers. So ignoring all the technicalities, what are the key properties of graphene? They would include high electron mobility. This makes it a fantastic conductor of electricity. Another one would be high thermal conductivity. It conducts heat rapidly 
and so does not get hot. The heat passes through. Optical transparency is another of these uh, attributes. Due to the atomic structure, the photons pass straight through. It's almost transparent. It's also extremely strong. The atomic structure is very stable, and this is, makes it strong and flexible. So let's watch a short video. This video is from Samsung. Some of the applications have already been created and are on an experimental basis. So what are the potential applications? Nano level electronics, smaller and more efficient. This means that diodes and transistors can be made only a few atoms thick. They also do not retain heat like silicone, so they can be stacked together. These can be made through an inkjet printing process, which means that the printed electronics can be put onto fabric. So wearable electronics are now a real possibility. As you saw in the video, printing onto a flexible substrate, they can create flexible touch screens. We shall see this application in the market in a very few years. It's also possible of more uh, efficient solar panels. The solar panel can be made on flexible substrates, removing the glass. The weight reduction and durability will make solar panels more economic. More efficient small batteries. Layers of graphene make great capacitors. They charge very rapidly. Soon the electronics to control the discharge will enable high capacity, very light batteries. So to summarize, we already have graphene-based coating that are being used to harden cutting tools. Soon there will be paint finishes for cars which will provide much better corrosion pr proofing. Personal electronics will be an early application together with cloud computing electronics and will make computing smaller faster and cheaper. These much smaller printed electronics will hit the market within the next couple of years. The solar panels <clears throat> and small quick charge batteries will be introduced within the next few years. For our clients and asset-based lenders, these changes will be close watching. Thank you for joining us today and please remember, a second opinion is always worth a small investment.